few years ago, I went to a shopping mall. I had a Christmas bonus, and that money was burning a hole in my pocket. And I wanted to buy a fancy trench coat from one of those British brands. I walked into the store really excited to get it. And then I walked out with nothing. And then I went next door to an Italian luxury brand to buy a dress. Nothing fit me there either. And then I went from store to store to store. And I couldn't give them my money. And these retailers couldn't take my money. And they're in the business of taking your money. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I got sick and tired of feeling too short, too fat, not valuable enough because of sizes. A little label on your clothes with a number and a whole lot of value. And I decided this didn't work for me anymore. And it was time to change everything. Together with my partner, who is a mechanical and software engineer, we had a background in 3D printing. And I thought, let's use the principles of this to, do, to change the way clothes are made forever. And that's what we did. But it was the final straw that day that made us think differently. How do we change sizes? Well, before you blow everything up, you have to kind of figure out how it got that way. Sizes were invented about 100 years ago, because before that, you kind of made your own clothes at home on your sewing machine, or you went to the local seamstress or dressmaker. But in the 1920s, shopping started to really happen. Stores had inventory, clothing that was mass produced for the average person. But who's average? What are sizes? How does it work? Well, it kind of works like this. Your favorite designer designs a collection of clothes. And then they find one person, that brand's fit model. And they put all of the clothes on that one person to make it fit. For women, she's generally a size 6 to an 8. For men, that brand's fit model is usually a man who's about 5'11 with a 32-inch waist. And the whole collection is then mapped to that person. And every single size is graded on that one person's body. So one inch is added generally to their bust, their waist, then hips, and moved out for the sizes up and down. So when you go shopping, you find something that fits you. It seems very random, because it is. It means you happen to have the closest proportions to that brand's fit model. Well, you are not a number, and neither am I. Retailers have a hard time getting it all right, because they have to guess about a lot of things. Generally, 6 to 12, sometimes two years out, will that item sell? Will the color of the season be really popular and people are going to get that thing? And also, they worry about making sure that they have the right inventory. But what happens if one year it's a little warmer than expected? They're stuck with a lot of winter coats if you don't end up buying it. So getting sizes is difficult. Getting inventory is difficult. But the retailers aren't the bad guys. We all collectively have power in our purchases. Over the last 20 years, we are all consuming 400% more clothing. The fast fashion industry is devastating. The average American person is throwing out 82 pounds of textile waste every year. It is an environmental nightmare. What I didn't mention is that for retailers, getting that whole inventory story right is also difficult. Up to $50 billion of dumped inventory is going to landfill every year because they can't get sizing right. When you make a purchase online, often 35 to 50 percent of those clothing purchases are returned. The number one reason? Fit. If it doesn't fit you, you send it back, and a lot of that inventory goes straight to landfill. So we've talked about sizes for retailers being difficult and sizes for humans being difficult. But what does that really mean for your ego? What does it mean to be sized up? Well, for a lot of us, we don't like to be defined by one number, by your height, your weight, your age. It can be very demoralizing. But you think, 
oh, well, I'm a good person. I don't just throw my clothes out. I donate them, I recycle them, I upcycle them. But that's not really a solution either. A lot of fast fashion is really poorly made, and it's made to be disposable. Have you ever bought a shirt and had a button fall off immediately? I saw one nod back there. That's because for those factories, they don't tie the knots in the threads before they tie on the buttons, before or after, because it would take too long and cost too much, and they just assume the clothes are disposable anyway. The average piece of clothes is worn seven times before it's thrown away for those fast fashion items. So we all kind of have a responsibility as well. We've talked about a lot of things, but what about that human feeling? That feeling that I am defined by a size and I feel bad about it. There's a great episode of Seinfeld where Seinfeld says, I'm the exact same size as I was in college. I'm a 31. But he was scratching off the 32 and wearing the 31 because he felt that he had to lie. You don't need to feel bad about yourself. None of us do. So what is the future? The future of manufacturing is not design, make a lot of stuff, and then try to sell it. The future is design, sell it, then make it. And there are a lot of companies out there trying to do that, including mine. But before we change absolutely everything, what is your responsibility? What are you all going to do? Might I suggest, buy fewer, buy better. It's not about bespoke. It's about being woke. Be conscious of your purchases. Know what you're doing. Really, be confident that your dollars make a difference and that your purchase is going to stick around. So number two, wear it for longer. It's OK if you're wearing the same thing in your Instagram pictures. It's really OK. Just tell your friends that's your environmental contribution. You're not disposing your clothes after seven wears. You got the pictures to prove it. Number three, love what you buy. Think about the people who made those clothes and honor the clothing and your items during its life cycle under your care. So in conclusion, try to do a little bit better. And for those of us on the other side making things, we will try to help you. Because the future of manufacturing is fast, advanced, made to fit. And how are we doing that? One perfectly sized garment for your already wonderful body. Thank you. <laughs>